Imagine a world where rivers flow uphill, where water dances its way through mountains, and where the impossible becomes reality. Welcome to the epic tale of China's ambitious endeavor, the South North Water Transfer Project. Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're diving into how China managed to build not just any river, but the longest and most expensive river in the world. But before we unveil this marvel, let's set the stage. Picture a China facing water scarcity issues of monumental proportions. According to the World Bank, China is one of the most water-stressed countries globally, with per capita water resources only a quarter of the global average. Over 400 of China's 600 cities grapple with water shortages, impacting millions of urban residents. But it's not just cities feeling the pinch. In agricultural regions, water scarcity stifles crop yields and productivity, with northern China particularly affected. Rapid urbanization and industrialization exacerbate the situation, increasing water demand in cities like Beijing, where a growing population and booming industries strain already limited water resources. The South North Water Transfer Project emerged as a beacon of hope, a solution to quench the thirst of millions and irrigate the fields of progress. With agriculture accounting for about 70% of China's total water usage and many agricultural regions suffering from water scarcity, the project isn't just about providing drinking water, it's about revitalizing agricultural production and ensuring food security for millions. By transferring water from water-rich southern regions to water-stressed northern areas, the project aims to rebalance the distribution of this precious resource and foster sustainable development across the country. It's like the Aquaman of infrastructure projects, only without the trident. Now, let's rewind a bit. The grand plan was set in motion back in the 50s, but it was in the 90s that things kicked into gear. Fast forward to today, and we're knee-deep in the action, with the project unfolding in three mammoth phases. Phase one, that's the eastern route, channeling water from the Yangtze River to quench the thirst of Beijing and beyond. Then there's the central route, snaking through mountains and valleys to reach the Yellow River. And last but not least, the western route is still in the pipeline, but promising to deliver liquid gold to the arid regions of Xinjiang. It's a saga of engineering prowess, environmental concerns, and a whole lot of water wrangling. But hey, when life gives you droughts, build the world's longest river, right? Now let's talk about phase two, AKA the central route. This one's a real roller coaster ride, literally. It carves its way through the rugged terrain of central China, zigzagging through mountains and valleys like a water snake on a mission. Along the way, it taps into the Han River, a tributary of the Yangtze, and makes a beeline for the Yellow River, China's second longest river and the backbone of the north. Think of it as a water highway, connecting the lush south to the thirsty north in one grand aquatic adventure. And last but not least, we've got phase three, the western route. Now, this one's still in the works, but boy is it promising. Imagine water gushing through the deserts of Xinjiang, turning barren lands into fertile oases and bringing hope to millions in China's far west. It's like a liquid dream come true for regions plagued by drought and desertification. Let's take a deep dive into the awe-inspiring construction and infrastructure feats behind the South North Water Transfer Project, where engineering meets ambition on a colossal scale. A network of canals stretching over 1,400 kilometers navigates through tough terrain and busy cities. This isn't your average water channel. We're talking about the Eastern Route, a remarkable engineering feat that moves water from the Yangtze River to the dry north. With a capacity of over 14 billion cubic meters per year, it's like building a superhighway for water, complete with pumping stations that could fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool in the blink of an eye. But wait, there's more. Let's talk tunnels. Not just any tunnels, mind you, but some of the longest and deepest in the world. For instance, consider the massive 22-kilometer-long Donjanko Tunnel, a subterranean marvel that snakes its way through mountains and valleys like a water serpent on a mission. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We're talking about a network of tunnels spanning over 1,300 kilometers, burrowing through bedrock and concrete to deliver water to every nook and cranny of the north. And let's not forget about the pumping stations, the unsung heroes of this aquatic adventure. With a combined pumping capacity of over 1,000 cubic meters per second, these behemoths can move enough water to fill over 400 Olympic-sized swimming pools every hour. And as if that wasn't impressive enough, throw a sprinkle of reservoirs, aqueducts, and control gates, 
and you've got yourself a recipe for engineering excellence. Let's shine a light on the environmental and social implications of the South North Water Transfer Project, because every grand endeavor comes with its share of challenges and consequences. First off, let's talk ecosystems. With canals carving through landscapes and rivers diverted from their natural courses, the project has stirred up quite the ecological plot. For instance, the diversion of water from the Yangtze River to the north has disrupted downstream ecosystems and wetlands, impacting species such as the Yangtze finless porpoise. In addition, wetlands along the route of the canals, like those near the Honghihani rice terraces in Yunnan province, have been drained or altered, resulting in habitat loss for migratory birds and other wildlife. With millions relying on these newfound water sources, ensuring purity is a top priority. Yet, pollution and sedimentation pose ongoing threats to the pristine flow. Then there's the human side of the equation. Communities have been uprooted, homes demolished, and livelihoods disrupted in the name of progress. Take, for example, the relocation of villages in Hubei province to make way for the construction of the Danxiangku Reservoir. This has led to social upheaval and loss of traditional livelihoods raising concerns about the welfare of displaced residents. But fear not, for efforts are underway to right these wrongs. From reforestation projects to eco-friendly infrastructure, China is on a mission to mitigate the project's environmental footprint. And when it comes to social justice, compensation packages and resettlement programs aim to ease the burden on displaced communities. As of 2024, the South North Water Transfer Project continues to make significant progress. The eastern route, spanning over 1,400 kilometers, is nearing completion, with most sections already operational and providing water to northern regions such as Beijing. Similarly, the central route, which involves extensive tunneling through mountainous terrain, has seen substantial advancement, although some segments are still under construction. However, despite these achievements, the project faces ongoing challenges that require careful attention and mitigation efforts. Engineering complexities, such as the construction of tunnels and canals in challenging terrain, pose significant technical hurdles. Environmental concerns persist, particularly regarding the impact on ecosystems and water quality. Additionally, logistical challenges, such as land acquisition and resettlement of affected communities, remain complex issues that require careful planning and coordination. Despite these challenges, concerted efforts are underway to address them through innovative solutions and adaptive strategies. For instance, environmental mitigation measures, such as habitat restoration and water quality monitoring, aim to minimize the project's ecological footprint. The economic benefits of the South North Water Transfer Project are vast and far-reaching. Improved water supply for agriculture, industry, and urban areas has boosted productivity, stimulated economic growth, and enhanced living standards for millions. Agriculture in particular has seen a surge in productivity, with reliable water sources transforming arid lands into fertile fields of abundance. However, these benefits come with a price tag. Construction expenses have soared into the billions, and ongoing maintenance requires substantial investment. Despite the costs, the long-term economic gains outweigh the initial outlay, making the South North Water Transfer Project a sound investment in China's future prosperity. Looking ahead, the future of the South North Water Transfer Project is as vast as the rivers it aims to tame. Expansion plans loom large on the horizon, with proposals to extend existing routes and construct new ones to meet growing water demands. Continued maintenance is paramount, with ongoing investments required to ensure the project's longevity and efficiency. In China's water management strategy, the project plays a pivotal role, serving as a cornerstone in the nation's quest for water security and sustainable development. By bridging the gap between water-rich and water-scarce regions, it fosters equitable distribution and spurs economic growth across the country. Moreover, its potential impact on regional development is immense, with water becoming a catalyst for prosperity in once parched lands. The South North Water Transfer Project is not just a feat of engineering, but a symbol of hope for millions facing water scarcity. As we witness the transformative impact of this ambitious endeavor, it's essential to continue the dialogue and explore its implications further. Share your thoughts and questions about the projects in the comments below, and let's continue learning and discussing how we can address water challenges worldwide. Together, we can keep the flow of ideas and solutions going.